Hello, Internet, the famous AT intro. Today, I want to talk about the color manager in Advanced Schema. Um, I typically use a framework for managing my colors. And recently, I had a customer who gave me 15 different colors and called them all primary. Uh, we had to then rearrange those into some grouping of similar colors and make them variations. And what we ended up was with five brand colors. Uh, with some variations. Um, it did not fit into my model of primary, secondary, accent, action, etc. Um, so we had to rethink how we're going to create these colors for the client. Um, they were actually graphic designers and they already had a style guide, so there was no changing their mind. Uh, we had to go with what made sense to them. AT came to the rescue with the color manager. Uh, and once I started exploring it and realizing how powerful it is, it is a brilliant, brilliant addition to Advanced SEMA AT. Um, I think if you're not using a uh, framework with colors, uh, this is absolutely a good way to manage your colors in bricks. So I'm going to have a very quick look at it. And once you enable the colors, so actually let's have a quick look at where you would enable that first. Um, I should have brought this up initially. So if I go to Advanced SEMA and Theme Settings, and then go into your global settings. We need to enable the global colors for this to happen. Once you've done that in your builder, up on the very top right here, you can see a little color palette, uh, which is your color manager. Okay, so what we're gonna do is click on that and that gives us our color manager. Now I've got a framework, my own framework here, which has got a bunch of base uh, colors in there, but I'm gonna ignore those for now. It's just showing me all of those here. I can actually rename them from here uh, these are actually, I won't do that because these are all brought in by a SAS framework. So what we do here is we go point at that and say we want to do a, a new palette. We're going to call this a test. For want of a better word, we call it test, press the enter key. Uh, and we can disable the palette if we want to. If we want to clean up our colors, we can have a whole bunch here. Enable, disable them. Uh, you can feature them in the list so you can see, you know, right at the top of this list here, the color. Uh, colors that you want. So you can create multiple palettes, which is the first cool part of it. Rename your palette, uh, create a new palette. You can duplicate the palette uh, or you can delete the palette all from this one toolbar up here. So that's really, really cool. All right, now if we look at our test palette, we are going to create the first one. I'm going to call this primary. Actually, I'm going to call it test primary because we've already got a prime uh, set of primary colors. So I'm going to call this test primary uh, and press the enter key. Now we've got a color ready to go. So I'm just going to click on the swatch and change this to be a color, maybe this sort of blue color there. And there is our primary color. Now I'm going to do another one by just adding another color for this test secondary. The secondary. Uh, grab the swatch, move that to maybe this yellowish color, and that will be our secondary color. Done. All right, now here's where it's really, really cool. Now with these, I'm gonna show you before I get into changing these colors, I'm gonna go over to a block. I'm gonna go into my CSS and do a root CSS. I'm gonna change my color. Test, here's my colors, test primary, test secondary. So automatically when you create those colors, they're automatically in the autocomplete of Superpower PSS, Superpower CSS, which is absolutely brilliant. I'm loving, loving, loving that. Okay, so let's go back to our color manager. And what you'll see is that the test primary was converted to a variable of lowercase test. The space was replaced with a dash. What you can do here is to make it make sense to you is on that palette, when you click on it, there is a way, I can't remember where it is, can't see it here. There was a way in this list, maybe it's got to go out of it, come back in. There was a view here. We could actually click on a button. It's, it's gone, it's gone for me. Uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? Anyway, previously when I was looking at this, you can click on a button here and convert it to a variable. I'm not sure why that's disappeared. Maxine might be able to comment on this video and tell us why that disappeared. But here we go. If we point at this test primary, for example, and we use our mouse, we can rename the color. 
We can generate complementary colors. We can generate shades of colors. We can duplicate the color, and then we can copy that to the clipboard, which I'm going to show you very shortly, or we can delete the color. So all from this one toolbar here, we can do so many. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to generate shades of colors. I click on Generate Shades. I want six versions of it, so that's going to be six light, six dark versions. Uh, and these are the previews of them. Decide whether we want to generate light or dark shades. Decide if we want transparencies. I'm just going to leave them all turned on and it generates shades. Now we've got all of these test primary L1, L2, up through to L6, D1 through to D6, transparency 1 through to 6. Now these transparencies are only on the uh, root color, on the um, this one up here. It's not transparencies on the variations, um, which is understandable that maybe that could be an option in there. So if we went into generate shades, it could be maybe a Another switch here to generate uh, preview shades on the, uh, sorry, generate shades on the variations as well, uh, because sometimes people use those, but uh, in this case, it doesn't do that. So hit generate shades on that. Now we've got a, very, very quickly, we've got primary colors, secondary colors with a whole bunch of variations, and they're ready to use. So if I can go into this block here, uh, go into my background, and I can change that, my test palette, there they are there, well, I can view it by list. There's all our colors there. All right, so I'm gonna test secondary. All right, now what if we wanna change that programmatically? Back to it. Like that. So I'm gonna to go to my test CSS and I'm going to put background of test Secondary, there we go. So we can use the variables there as well. So the color manager is not only easy to use, easy to create colors, uh, it's also immediately available as variables in your code here. Let's say you're using, say, WP Code Box, right? And WP Code Box doesn't have all the autocomplete for this. That's a bit of a pain, isn't it, right? So what we can do there is, uh, I'll just do this with Notepad just to demonstrate. So I'm going to bring up Notepad. Got a Notepad document there. I'll go back to my color manager. And let's say we want the test primary, put my mouse at it, copy the clipboard, go to my Notepad. So this would be your WP code box, whatever, and paste that in there. We want the test primary D5, copy that to clipboard, come back here. Paste that there. So it is super, super powerful, super useful. Uh, if I didn't use uh, predefined colors or predefined color names in a framework, I would definitely be using this. Uh, it is so much easier than the Bricks built-in uh, color manager here, where all you get is that. All you can do is copy the, uh, co actually got a copy the clipboard on that. Let's just check what that does. Check what that. Oh, it does the same thing. So in the Bricks Color Manager, you can actually build them one. You can actually copy the clipboard these colors as well. Um, to edit it, to rename it, you use the pencil. Rename it here. Then Enter key doesn't work, so you're going to hit the Save. Um, if you want to create a new color, you have to say the Test Primary here. Then you have to change your color here. And then you hit the Save. That gives it a color name. You've got to go and edit, then change your color name. This one here, I want a new color. I just go to the bottom, say new color, test, accent. Bang, there's my color. Change the color to whatever I want. There it is there. I'm going to create some transparencies and other shades on that. I just go create the shades. How many do I want? Generate shades. Done. There's all my accent colors done. And all of those colors automatically appear here. I want to go into my background color now. All my accent colors are there. All done, ready to go. All these variables are already available for my superpower CSS or copy to clipboard. I think Maxime's done a brilliant job with this. Um, I did find one bug, which is the you can't delete these colors. So if I go into uh, my primary, for example, actually I'll create a new one before I delete it. So I'll call this say test delete. And what I found is that when you hit the delete and delete again, it just doesn't work. Oh, it did work that time. So it's, it's a bit quirky. I was clicking the delete 
multiple times trying to delete and they just wouldn't delete. Uh, and that one, it just worked. So maybe it's how quickly you double click, I'm not sure. Anyway, I think it's brilliant. Another neat feature from AT. Uh, Maxime just keeps making it better and better. Love your work, dude. Okay, hope you like this.